After creating a project, you'll start by creating a database. The majority of your database creation will be done in the online designer. Here you have a list of all the instruments, or forms, in your project. REDCap uses the terms instrument and form interchangeably. You can hit the Create button to create an instrument from scratch, or you can use the Import button to pull in an instrument from the REDCap shared library. This is a collection of instruments put together and monitored by one of the groups in the REDCap consortium. Any instrument that has a red star next to it is a validated instrument that has gone through a significant screening process to ensure that it is both free for use and that it has been translated accurately from paper to electronic format. If you're using an existing scale or survey that is relatively common and open to public use, you might want to check the REDCap library before you create it, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Finally, you can upload an instrument from another project. Once you've created your instrument, you can make changes to it by clicking on the title. To create a new field, click on the Add Field button. To edit an existing field, click on the pencil icon. There are many types of fields that you can use in a REDCap project. Use a text box to display free text as one line, or a notes box to display free text as several lines. They both have a 65,000 character limit. Calculated fields do calculations. There are three types of multiple choice questions, yes, no, and true false questions, an e-signature field, a field to upload files, a slider field, a field for descriptive text to write out instructions or add media, and section headers that break up the text. The field labels where you type out the question as you want it to be seen on the data entry form or survey. For example, a field label might be first name, or how many packs of cigarettes do you smoke in a week, or when were you diagnosed with diabetes. The variable name is a short alphanumeric name that you'll use to identify your field on the back end, and is how REDCap identifies your variable as something unique. This should be something relatively short and meaningful enough that it makes sense when you analyze your data. You also have the option to validate your text field. If you want people to enter words in your text field, you won't need to validate it, but you will for most other kinds of text fields. For example, if you're using dates, you'll want to select the date format or the date time format. You can validate fields as email, integers only, a number with multiple decimal places, a phone number, a time, or a zip code. There are two reasons you validate a field. One reason is to prevent data entry errors, since a validated field won't accept different data types. The other is to ensure fields are exported appropriately. For example, if a numbers field is not validated as an integer or number, then it will export as text, meaning it would sort as 1, 10, 11, instead of 1, 2, 3. The validation would then have to be manually changed later. Validating fields correctly in the beginning saves a lot of time and effort. So, as this is an age field, I'm going to validate it as an integer. The minimum and maximum provide an expected range for the field. I expect my participants to have an age between 18 and 80. These are soft validations, meaning people can enter other values, but they'll get a quick pop-up letting them know they might need to check their answer. You can make a field required by selecting Yes for the Required option under Validation. On the data entry form filled out by a researcher, there will just be a prompt if this field has been left blank. On a survey form filled out by a participant, participants will not be able to move on until they provide an answer in the field. You can also mark the field as containing potentially identifying information, like name, birthday, or address. You can give it a custom alignment, which just says where the box or multiple choice answers appear in relation to the field label, and you could give it a field note, 
a small text reminder that displays underneath the field, just like it does under the field note field. For multiple choice fields, you'll select which of the three multiple choice fields you want drop down list, radio buttons, or check boxes. Give it a field label and variable name. Then list all potential answer choices in the Choices box, with one answer per line. REDCap will automatically format your choices as numbers in the back end. If, partway through your study, you decide you want to add an answer choice, you can do so at any time. However, you should never renumber answer choices. If I want to add the choice Physical Therapy, I should not insert the number in the middle of my current choices and renumber the existing choices. If I try to do that, anything that was recorded as Biomedical Sciences will now be read as Physical Therapy. Anything that was Psychology is now going to read as Biomedical Sciences, and so on. Instead, just add the choice where you want it displayed, but assign it the next number on the list. The order of these coded choices doesn't matter. It only matters that the numbers are unique and that you don't change them. Another common option for multiple choice questions is wanting a not applicable or other answer option. It's considered best practice to give them a large number, usually two or three digits, like 88 or 99. This sets them apart from the rest of your answer choices and gives you room to add more in between. If you have several multiple choice questions using the same answer choices, you don't have to type them out every time. Instead, you can go to Copy Existing Choices, find an example that matches how you want it to look, and click Use. This way, you keep your coding consistent across all multiple choice fields, which helps prevent errors when you're doing your analysis and saves you time. Dropdown fields have one slight difference compared to radio buttons or checkbox fields. In dropdown fields, you have the option to enable autocomplete for the dropdown, so that as people are typing, the form tries to autocomplete the answer for them. Next are slider fields. Creating a slider field is done in the same basic way as all the other fields, but instead of providing answer choices, you provide labels for the different points on the slider. You don't have to put in labels or fill in all the label fields. Slider fields are scored on a 0 to 100 scale, and you could choose whether the person entering the information can see that number value. Custom alignment can also be a little more interesting with slider fields, because you can make them horizontal, which is the default, or vertical. Next, we have descriptive fields. Descriptive fields have the same field label and variable name set up that all the other fields do. If you're using the descriptive field to provide instructions, you'd put them into the field label. You can also use the descriptive field for file attachments. Here, I have a picture uploaded and displayed inline so that it's automatically seen when the page loads. If I wanted to, I could change that to a link for participants to download the picture. This is great if, for example, you want your participants to download a consent form. You can also embed audio files that participants could listen to or download, or you could link to an external video, such as a YouTube video, by pasting the URL in the Embed an External Video field. Again, you can choose if you want it inline so participants can play it as they're filling out the form, or place it in a pop-up window. If you select Inside Pop-up, participants click the Watch Video button and get a pop-up window to let them play it. The next kind of field is a Yes-No field. We actually recommend that you don't use the Yes-No or True-False fields, because the choices are hard-coded with one yes, zero no, or one true, zero false. This isn't a problem unless researchers decide partway through the project that two answer choices are no longer sufficient. In that case, you have to go and change this to a multiple choice field,
and may forget the existing codes, meaning that what was yes is now coded no. All of the no answers are lost, and you would have to start from scratch with the new yes in NA fields. Therefore, to save yourself time and trouble, start by creating yes-no or true-false fields as multiple choice questions. File upload fields are where a participant or data enterer can upload a document. These all have a field label and variable name. Similarly, the e-signature field is simply a field label and a variable name. The final kind of field is a section header. Section headers are yellow bars that help break forms into easily manageable chunks and let people know what's coming up in the next group of questions. These don't have a variable name to worry about, only an optional field label. Here, I've used a little bit of HTML to change the color of the text and center it. You can use HTML in several areas of RedCap, such as field labels, answer choices, or survey invitations. You can find HTML coding for PCOM brand colors, together with links to HTML coding for other colors, on the RedCap guide at libguides.pcom.edu slash redcap. These are the essential features of the online designer. We'll go over some of the more advanced features in our supplementary videos.